Hey, good afternoon, everyone. The voice past the Thank all you guys for joining me again for our uh, segment today. A word for you. Just thank God, man, for all he's doing. Thank God, man, for him blessing us, keeping us, and all the things he's doing. Thank all you guys for your support. Thank you guys for um, staying with the uh, quarantine, staying in the house, keeping shut. Thank God for all he's doing, man. Just God continue to bless and give you guys a moment to come on here before I uh, give you the word that uh, God has given me. So thank you guys again for the support. Uh, be sure to join us tonight for uh, Bible study, uh, Word Movers, Tuesday, 8 p.m. Um, tonight we're going to talk about um, the adversities, challenges, challenges and struggle with pornography uh, that some of us may deal with. I think it's a great word. I think if you have it or know someone to have it, tune into it. It's not something, I don't know if the word is tonight is not going to bash, but it's definitely going to get in detail. Maybe we can help each other. So have your questions ready and, um, you know, be able to inform if so. So uh, thank God for that. So um, thank God for this, this time of prayer, the time of word uh, that he's given us his day to word for you. The segment today um, you know, I, I was praying that God was showing me that a lot of stuff that's done in the natural is uh, God's way of speaking in the spiritual. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits of principalities and high places. Meaning that if you go to the Old Testament, a lot of things that God did in the Old Testament, he did in the physical, but in the New Testament, he did in the spiritual. And um, a lot of the Old Testament, how he did things is a representation for the things that's in the new. I'm going somewhere with this. So notice in the Old Testament, for example, like, um, he fed them with bread, right, with physical bread. And then you get over to the New Testament, and he said Jesus is actually bread. Um, he did a lot of physical things in the uh, Old Testament, then get to the New Testament and did a lot of spiritual things. So I was praying, and what God was showing me, so I, I posted the scripture in, uh, I think it's First John chapter 1, verses 7. And it talks about the uh, blood of Jesus being held with the ability to be able to cleanse you from all sin. So what God was showing me, he says, listen, um, a lot of people right now are wearing masks, they're wearing gloves, and they're trying to keep clean, and they're using all these things for a covering. And God was showing me, he says that um, this is what the people are going to have to prepare to do on a daily basis, but in a spiritual place. God says, you and I, you and I are going to have to be covered. And it has nothing to do with the mask, it has nothing to do with the gloves, but it has everything to do with the blood. So the thing is that a lot of people are wondering, what do we do once the doors open? God is saying, even after the doors open, it doesn't matter what doors open. What does matter when you go out, are you covered, right? The word sounded kind of cold when I heard it from God. But what God was basically saying is that the word hasn't changed that we all still need to be covered by the blood of Jesus, meaning that we don't need to do anything different. But God says you still must have the covering because the covering represents what it has always represented, that if you happen to die, and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, or if you do die and you do know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we believe and know that you are covered because there's power in the blood. Yes, the blood has the power to cover me. The blood um, shows that my sins have been paid and I'm no longer debt to the sin. But the blood doesn't always keep me from getting sick. The blood doesn't keep me from getting the coronavirus. But what the blood does keep me what, what the blood does do when it's applied, it means that regardless of what happens here on earth, that afterwards I'm going to go be with the Lord because to be present, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. To live as Christ is die, to die is gain. So God is not saying even after the doors are open that he's going to remove the coronavirus. God is saying that in this time, in this season, in the end times of where we're at, everybody's just going to have to be covered. I know that sounds cold, but God is saying that he, you know, there, there, there may not be a movement of the coronavirus. We may see the numbers go up. We may see the numbers go down. But regardless of what the numbers do, you and I just have to make sure that we are saved because no man knows the hour nor the time. I, I don't know when I'm going to die. I don't know how I'm going to die. I mean, I could wear gloves and a mask and die in a car accident. I can be wear a glove and mask and I can be shot. I can wear gloves and a mask and die of cancer. Um, I can wear all the gloves and a mask and I want to to protect me from coronavirus and die from something that's contrary. So, so the word of God is speaking the same today. It, it's not about me being covered with my gloves and mask, though you should wear them because we're supposed to. But at the end of the day, are you covered? And, you know, a lot of people that sell life insurance sell it this way. If something was to happen to you, um, you know, who would take care of things? Well, we're, we're, we're selling Christ insurance. 
Where is that? You know, you get saved. You call the name of the Lord. The Bible says, whoever call the name of the Lord shall be saved. You get saved. And you should know that regardless of what happened, whether it's corona, whether it's cancer, whether it's diabetes, whether it's some tragic accident, some freak thing that happens, you know that you are covered. Because um, God did not promise us uh, uh, how we were going to die. He, we know we're going to die. I mean, some of us may be here when the trumpet sounds off and when the dead in Christ rise, we shall rise with them. But what God is saying is that everybody must get saved. Um, it's not about him removing the coronavirus. It's not about seeing the numbers drop because we're living in a time right now where God is showing me the numbers may never drop. And that doesn't mean that we're going to be, but, but see, the thing is that the numbers may not drop, but that don't mean they're not going to open the doors. So listen, Paul says, delivers Christ as dies gain. You know, I heard somebody say this, and they said it from a comfortable place, and it may sound cold, that whatever death is given to me, that is my ticket out of here. So we as Christians, the Bible says to set your affections on things above, not on things beneath. You know, it's hard for a pastor or preacher to preach this type of word because every pastor wants to preach the word to say, you shall live and you shall not die, that this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. That's not in all cases, but they quote that by his stripes, you are healed. You're going to tell somebody by his, by their stripes, by his stripes, you are healed. They have Corona and they're still going to die. People have told people, I have told people by his stripes, they're healed and they still die. You know what? Because that's not what that scripture means. The scripture means that the stripes that he took on the cross for sin, not for your physical health. That's the problem. When the scripture is quote, it's quoted, they say, by his stripes, you are healed. You're healed from sin and death, not from the sickness of the body. And that's what the scripture is mistaught. And that's why people quote scripture wrong. And that's why people have people bedsides right now say this sickness is not into death, but the glory of God. And, and, and people are, are quoting those scriptures and um, saying by his stripes, we are healed. We're healed from sin, not from cancer, not from diabetes, not from AIDS, not from coronavirus. So if you understand that, you understand that the blood of Jesus keeps you and protects you. But it's, it's, it's up to God how you leave here, what he allows. So even if you have the blood, even though you're saved, because there's some saved people I know that have corona. I'm talking about they love the Lord, serve the Lord. They're in the hospital. They fight for life. They have corona. Does that mean that they love God any less? Absolutely not. Does, does, does it mean that they did something wrong? Absolutely not. You can catch corona just to catch it. But the, end of the, but the thing is this, if I catch corona and I'm saved, at least I know where I'm going to be. This is this is real preaching of the gospel, but don't nobody want to hear this because most pastors and preachers sugarcoat the word of God. Jesus, if Jesus was here, he would tell everybody, listen, it's just up to you to get saved. It's not for me to remove every sickness and every disease. He said, that's that's not my job. That's not what God does. God doesn't remove every bad thing to keep you away from something. What God does is says, listen, I died on the cross. It is finished. It is written. This is what I've given you. This is your ticket out of here. So regardless of what happens to you, this is your way out. Nobody's preaching it that way. Everybody's preaching, Father, I come against Corona. Um, I rebuke you, Corona, back to the pits of hell from which you came from. And guess what? Corona is sitting right there because it has an assignment. And you can't rebuke Corona just like you can't rebuke the devil. You don't have that much power. No Christian, no man of God or power on this earth has the ability right now to uh, rebuke the Corona. Just like you don't have the power to rebuke Satan because you can't. Because it is it is, it is, is a part of the will of God. When I say will of God, meaning that God permit it to happen. But with God allowing Corona, he allowed Christ. Every time he allowed a sickness, he allowed Christ. Christ is there. So whenever type of sickness comes, that's that's why Paul Paul said that he he learned that with in whatever state he was in, whether he was a base where where he was abound in all things to be able to be content. I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter whether we're poor, whether we're rich, sickness, famine, health, none of that stuff matters. At the end of the day, all that matters is, is that you and I are saved. The difference between a funeral and a home going. The home going is a person who knew Christ. A funeral is for somebody who has died twice. That's what I'm saying. Home going is for a person who knows Christ. Christ. A funeral is for a person that's going to die twice. So I hope you guys received my hope. This received you. Uh, you guys received this message today, man. It's definitely blessed by God. It may sound cold, but at the end of the day, we are ambassadors for Christ. Uh, heaven is our home. Heaven is our destination. This is just a visiting place for us. 
God did not promise that we were going to be here forever. Our assignment has always been to get souls saved and preach the, preach the unadulterated word of God, preach Christ crucified, um, not to pray that every bad thing that happens gets removed. Those are the people who are trying to win your membership or win your approval that pray like that. Any man or woman that's preaching this type of gospel knows that it's not a popular gospel. No, knowing that who who wants to who wants to hear God say, I'm not removing Corona. I've already given you my son. I've already given you the cure for all of that. I've already made it so that regardless of what happened, you are with me. I've already gone to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. If Jesus, great teaching, has gone to prepare a place for you and heaven is your final destination, why do you think he would keep you here? Answer that question for me today. If he's gone to prepare a place for you and I, and in his father's house is many mansions, why do you think he would stop you from dying? Why do you think that he would keep you here? I know that sounds selfish, but I really want you to get into great maturity of Bible teaching and understand it. If you really love God the way you say you love him and you, and you want to be in his presence and you serve him and you have laid down your life for him, why would he keep you here? knowing you could be there that's not his will his will is not to make you uncomfortable his will is not to make you comfortable on earth his will is to make you uncomfortable on earth because hopefully you'll reach out to heaven god will never make earth any better because it works against his plan he hopes that you 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 witness hell on earth so you seek heaven that's that's god's plan not to make it so you're so happy and comfortable here on earth because you know what god showed me something the other day i don't want me to keep babbling on but when Obama was in office, right, we had what we wanted. We were very, very comfortable. Um, you probably wouldn't believe this, right? But less people came to Christ when Obama was in office. You know why? Because we were comfortable. We had what we wanted. Do you know the day Trump came in office, how many people began to pray? How many people turned over their lives to Christ because they were fearful of what he's doing? The the um, the hubrisness and the um, acts of uh, whatever you call that Trump does has brought more people to Christ than anybody. Not Trump. I'm saying him being in office. I'm saying what he does, how he causes people to be fearful, how he causes people to be upset and how much hate has he created because people want him out of office. But when Obama was in office, we were comfortable. We laid back. We sang, danced, and we were married. I have nothing against President Obama, Michelle. I love Obama. I thank God for the first black president. But at, when, when God gave us what we wanted, we was content. We were happy. Now we got this man in office. We don't know what's going to happen. And we're running to churches, running to God, praying more than ever because we have something in office that uh, we don't agree with. It's the same thing that the children of Israel did. They asked for a king. And God says, listen, um, I don't want you to have a king. But if you want this king, I'm going to allow you to have him. But let me tell you the, the, the consequences and repercussion that comes along with King Saul. And they asked God for a king. God gave them a particular king. They never chose King Saul. God gave them King Saul because he knew what type of king, king Saul would be, just like he gave us Trump because he knew what type of uh, president Trump would be. And they, they voted for Trump. They got Trump. And guess what? Now they don't even want him in office. The same, the same people who are suffering right now from vote for our uh, suffering right now are some of the same people who voted Trump in office. And now they want him out. And guess what God says? You're stuck with him. I wouldn't be surprised under great teaching and under, under knowing how God works. Don't be surprised if Trump gets reelected again because it's the type, it's his type of attitude and the type of way he works. It's was drawing people to God because he's a loose cannon and he doesn't care and 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 he and he doesn't want your approval because he's a billionaire. He he doesn't move like all the other presidents move. And if you don't think that type of man is set by God. You don't understand great teaching because he's a type of Pharaoh. Pharaoh was just like a Trump. He, he didn't care. He was fearful. He didn't care about what nobody said. Just like Trump. But God allows a man like that to be all in office that he may draw people unto him. If you had Obama for, for a third term, trust me, you wouldn't be pushing like this because Obama wouldn't allow nothing like this to happen. So therefore, it would have been able to keep you comfortable. You got to understand how God works. God don't always use the things that we like. He used the things that we disagree with to bring us to him. You can put another black man in there. If you could put, uh, 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 I don't know, 
you know, whoever you want to put in there that's black. And it can be something that you want. As soon as you get what you want, you're going to be relaxed and you're going to sit back. But if God puts something in, something that you think is hateful, something that, that you think is racist or what's going to cause you to move. And guess what? Through the uh, um, through through Trump and his administration and things that happen right now, man, we on pins and needles. But guess what? It has caused us to all get back into church, caused us to all back get back into the face of God, whatever your religion or nationality is. It definitely has been a wake up call. Father, we just thank you right now for this word. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your revelation. We thank you for your truth right now, Father. May you just continue to be with us, oh, Father God, and bless us. In Jesus' name, Father God, cover all these great people, their family members, their friends, their kids. May you just continue to watch over them all. In Jesus' name we pray. Love you guys.